Okay, we're back. We're, we're throwing it back to 2018-ish. Remember when we built the walk-in closet? Yeah, yeah, it still doesn't have a door. Um, so that's what we're doing today, and it's kind of a nice change of pace after the uh, holiday season. I picked up some cherry, and we're just gonna build a simple sliding barn door. I've got the hardware, that's been sitting in the basement th for three years, and we just picked up the cherry yesterday, so that, uh, been in here overnight it's kind of like acclimated to the shop oh one of the things I did I uh, we're building this all out of dimensional lumber you could find at like Lowe's or Home Depot in uh, like the fancy wood section right not like the garbage two by fours that are all crooked so it's a little more expensive than maybe like plywood or something like that but uh, you know we wanted to go with a solid cherry door and then this was the best option but I wanted to make it accessible for, for, for you if you wanted to do something like this. So it's all just dimensional lumber, three and a half inch wide, five and a half inch wide, and eight feet long. Let's head over to the chop saw and cut everything up to length, and we'll go from there. Thanks for hanging out, let's do it. Okay, so we're starting off by building the base or all the vertical pieces. The door itself is going to be constructed of basically double thickness, three quarter inch boards, which you see here. And the vertical pieces, which I'm cutting now, are all of the three and a half inch wide pieces. As I'm doing this, I'm kind of taking a mental note as to which side is the better side, which pieces have like a big curve in them or checking or really any defect that I might be able to cut out because they are eight feet and I really only need, I don't know, seven feet of that. I can kind of cheat my way up or down. And I did end up getting these from a local hardwood dealer, not from Lowe's or Home Depot, though it is the same type of wood. And he basically only had these pieces of cherry left. So given the option, I might, uh, I might be able to sort through a few and try to avoid some of the ones with curves and things like that just so we get a straight door you'll see I'm marking all of these pieces at 84 inches which is the final dimension the top to bottom dimension of my door I decided to go with an inch overlap so basically the door itself is about two inches wider and two inches taller than the opening and one thing I didn't mention but I did in the very first part of that I ended up squaring up each end of each board so I basically took Every single board as is at eight feet. Just took it over to the chop saw, decided which end I wanted to start on, cut that flush so that's all nice and 90 degrees straight. So my next cut I know is gonna be perfect. Now that I have all the boards I need, uh, 10 in my case, because my door is 35 inches wide and I have three and a half inch pieces, so I needed 10. I'm just gonna lay them all out on my workbench, decide which face I want facing out, so out towards the bedroom, and then, you know, obviously the other face is gonna face in towards the closet and nobody's really gonna see that so I'm picking the best out of the two options and just lining them up seeing which boards I want where and making adjustments as needed the ones with big curves in them or curves of any kind I'm kind of setting towards the outside where there's gonna be a little more support uh, but overall at this point everything was looking pretty good so uh, we're ready to move on to the next step the next thing I do is take my palm router and I'm just putting an eighth inch chamfer on all of the faces of these vertical pieces that touch each other. So what that's doing is just breaking up the vertical pattern and it's creating kind of an accent that is, first of all, it's pleasing to the eye, but the other thing that it does is kind of hides or covers up any of the imperfections I might have in my board. So it kind of helps them all blend together, gives a bit of a more rustic look, and hides any of those slight curves that I wasn't able to take out when I processed everything on the chop saw. And next up, we are going to install some horizontal pieces. Okay, so we've got all of our vertical pieces cut. These are gonna run obviously from top to bottom. The next thing, I've got my five and a half inch pieces. So those are gonna go on the top, or the bottom and the top. 
And then we're gonna have one in the center. I don't know exactly how wide or where it's gonna go yet. Um, so I haven't cut it yet. But next up is basically gluing all these together. I, I had contemplated using dowels um, and I don't even know if I'm gonna glue them because I do wanna allow for wood movement. And I, it's just gonna be hanging. There's no real structural integrity to this thing. Um, so I think I might just clamp these together so they're tight and then install. I guess these would be battens, is that right? Let me know in the comments if that's wrong, but that's where we're going with this. We're gonna try to clamp everything together and then install the top and bottom supports and then uh, we'll go from there. I'm also gonna have these five and a half inch pieces run the length of this. So it'll be, you know, skinnier pieces in the middle and then a thick outside. I think it's gonna be a nice little look. It's also gonna get our door thickness to about an inch and a half. Let's do it. I decided the best way to install these was to basically just clamp them down and then use my 18 gauge brad nailer to nail them from the back side. The reason I decided to do that was because I don't really care what the inside of this door looks like so if it has some nail holes in them, even if I decide to cover them up or just like fill them with some sort of wood filler, uh, I don't really care about what that looks like because you honestly won't really see it when the door is open, it'll be against the wall, and when the door is closed, it'll be in the closet. So likely you'll never even get to look at them unless you somehow like lock yourself in the closet. <laughs> decided where I wanted that middle horizontal piece to go and it's about a third of the way down from the top and you'll see I'm gonna put an X in the bottom section and I think this ratio works pretty well one thing here you'll see me doing is just adding some wood glue and super glue the super glue is gonna hold it in place while I flip the door upside down and nail from the back This was by far the trickiest step to this entire build and that's putting in this X that's very common in like barn door style. And I didn't know exactly what this angle was when I measured it off of my drawing, my CAD drawing that I built before even tackling this project. It was a weird uneven angle. So basically what I did is I just laid the boards in place, at least for this first one, used a straight edge to mark the corners and then eyeball that angle the best I could. And then I just lined it up with the laser on my chop saw made the cut and it turned out pretty good you can see with these next two pieces there is like a slight gap that first piece one and nice there's a nice pressure fit um, but the other ones kind of hard to avoid just by the method I used. I think if I were to do this again I would find a good even nominal number to make that square and then I think the angles would work out a little bit better but I'm pleased with the way it came out
At this point, the door is almost done, and you'll see I go back in with my eighth inch chamfer and just soften all of those edges on both sides. And since this particular bit leaves a bit of a round corner, I think it's important to go back in with my chisel, mostly because it's fun, but also because it just gives that extra piece of craftsmanship and just square up all of those chamfers and make everything nice and uniform as best you can. The last step before finishing this up is just to go back in with a flush trim bit and you'll see some of those pieces were just a little bit proud so I'm just going to flush everything up so the door dimensions are all even, everything's square and it's pretty much ready to sand and finish at this point. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I almost forgot to do was the bottom of this thing, this is the bottom of the door, it has like a little tab that you screw to the floor and it rides in a groove. Um, so before I get too carried away with like finishing and sanding and stuff, um, I need to make sure I put that groove in. One thing I didn't think of that I, I'm sure I'm going to run into is I, you know, I, I, you saw me brad nail from the back side and it says the groove should be three quarter inches deep by a quarter inch wide. Quarter inch wide, cool, no problem. I've got a quarter inch uh, routing bit in there right now. This, I put nails through here and I, I, don't, I don't think I gave myself three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go until basically I hit those nails or just almost graze them. Um, and then depending on how far I get, I might just have to like grind down my little tab. I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, it's something I kind of overlooked, but I don't know. I think, I think we'll be all right. Last but not least, it's time to hit this thing with the final sand. I work my way down through the grits like any other project, and this time I'm using a new finish called Rubio Monocoat. I'm sure you've heard of it. If you've not, it's incredible stuff. Basically, you want to just sand, and then you'll see me spritz it with water to raise the grain between grits. Once it's to its final grit, which in my case was 320, you basically mix this stuff three to one, and then just wipe it on with a rag, get in all those little creases and crevices, and then wipe it off. The biggest thing is you don't want any of it to uh, sit dry, like any residue. You want to try to get it all off of the rag. So you'll see me come back and forth with a little bit of finish and then wipe it off and just try to get it as even as I can and get all that residue off and it leaves such a nice, perfect finish. And last thing you'll see me do here is just install the door hardware, which is just really a couple of wheels that are going to ride on the rail itself. Once that's done, we'll bolt them in place and it's off to the closet for final install. The final install went really smoothly. This is just a kit that I got on Amazon, which I'll link in the description if you want to purchase one yourself. It's really just a matter of finding where your studs are. In this case, I built the wall so I kind of knew, but it's already pre-drilled and spaced for 16 inch on center, which is your typical wall configuration. Basically just mark an inch and a little bit above the height of your door, and then just make sure it's level and bolt it into place. Do you have a clearance to get it up high if you up and over that? Just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down? Mind it? When it's gray outside, it really makes me wonder. I wonder if we should put. So it has a thing on the pink floor. Oh, it looks so good. And after the install of the little guide rail, that's it. It's done. I, I love the way it came out and I hope you do too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you think I've earned your subscription, please hit that subscribe button and keep your eye out for more projects this coming year. Again, I'm going to link everything that I used for this project down in the description, so don't hesitate to go check that out. Take a look at some other videos, see what you like. We'll see you next time. Bye. Until winter comes It really makes me wonder